Welcome to Charlatan Score. Today we're doing Bioshock 2. Okay, for how this is gonna work, I'm gonna throw out a bunch of seemingly random scores that are actually four different major areas of mastery for a video game divided into 10 categories that are then divided into various areas where a game should be good. By the end of this, we're gonna add it all up and you're gonna see exactly why this game gets the score that it gets and where it ranks among the others. Well, where it will rank once we get some more reviews in, but basically I'm ignoring the traditional like Western, like 70 is C, which is average, 90 is A, which is what you should expect. I'm throwing that out. I'm just doing like based on the average of all the games, whatever, we're wasting time here. One last thing to note for these reviews in general, which uh, I don't think applies here, but while I do have very specific criteria for areas of the game, I do reserve the point to just give a game an automatic zero in a certain area in case something is just so egregiously bad. With the main example I can think of is, it'll get a zero out of 10 in gameplay, if said gameplay is obviously designed around trying to get the player to buy microtransactions or loot boxes in order to have a good time. Now let's talk about Bioshock 2. Bioshock 2 is a sophomore slump of the extremely popular and well-regarded Bioshock that was made in all of two years by a team that only partially contained the original members of the team that made Bioshock. While there are some objective improvements to gameplay that we've seen, the game falls flat in other areas, which makes it ultimately not quite as good as its original game. Bioshock 2 only gets a 1 out of 4 for plot coherence because while it is easy to follow, in fact to a fault as there are zero twists and turns along the way, it doesn't provide too much entertainment value and also unless you're very familiar with the first Bioshock game, if you were to just go into Bioshock 2 blind, you'd probably be scratching your head at a few of the concepts and things around Rapture. In fact, you'd probably be scratching your head at a Rapture itself. However, Bioshock 2 makes up for this in plot function by getting a 4 out of 4 for making sure the plot and the gameplay do not walk over each other, causing the player to not enjoy themselves, and also it gets an easy 2 out of 2 for not having any gaping plot holes that might give the player pause. That leads an overall score for plot at 7 out of 10. Next category is world building, which yes, world building and plot are two different things. Initially, the game gets a 2 out of 4 for the universe making sense because while it does seem to make sense inside of itself, there's still a lot of things that, unless you're familiar with the whole Bioshock franchise, you might be a bit confused about. Additionally, for interest in the world, it only gets a 2 out of 4, because while there is just enough to make me think, ooh, it's a diesel punk world, ooh, they have powers and gene splicing. The rest of the world, especially the half-banked Ayn Rand, half-banked Ayn Rand, <laughs> I'm leaving that in. 2 out of 4, whatever, and then for plot consistency, 1 out of 2, because this entire game is basically being shoehorned into the original continuity of Bioshock. By the way, that's 5 out of 10 in case you never got past elementary school math. Moving on from lore to looks, we've got the graphics category. The game gets a 3 out of 5 for graphical looks, because everything seems clean, it all runs together, and there isn't anything really glaringly wrong with it. But it's not amazing, it's just competent. And then moving on to how well the graphics work together, nothing clips, there's no texture issues, and overall there's nothing like accidentally seeing the insides of a splicer's head unless you have put bullets into it. So it gets a 5 out of 5 and an 8 out of 10 overall for its graphics. In aesthetics, Bioshock 2 only gets a 1 out of 2 for having an interesting color palette because there's a whole lot of browns to see occasional gold that's sprinkled about in order for you to notice things and yeah, I know this was the golden age of brown, but still a little bit of color shaken up would be nice. The blues do help things, but basically the blues from the uh, butterfly cult or whatever are the one out of two that this game gets because otherwise we'd be in that sea of brown. As far as characters and items go, it gets a full three out of three because I'm always gonna know that a splicer comes from a Bioshock game and the big daddies are iconic entirely. Especially between Adam and his little sisters, this game has a distinct take on Dieselpunk, which allows it to get the full three out of three. However, we're going back to the game being visually striking, while the game does have that uh, look of the characters and assets, it still only gets a 2 out of 5 because, again, we are in a sea of brown. 
Bioshock 2, however, does a very good job of sound design, getting a 4 out of 5 for the game's original licensed soundtrack because while Gary Scheiman is still with the team, it's not quite as good as the first Bioshock game, but that doesn't mean it's not extremely well put together and very enjoyable for all the scenes. Then the game gets a full 3 out of 3 for Foley and sound effects because everything about this game when you're at least closing your eyes and like walking through the big thumps that Subject Delta makes, the noise the shotgun makes, footsteps, screams, bullets, etc. This game does a very good job at sound design, and then it gets two out of two for voice acting because, well, voice acting, if you're a AAA game, that's an easy score to make. It's like nobody's flubbing lines, everyone did their vocal warm-ups before recording, and the characters are interesting enough with their voice enunciation, accents, etc. to make me care about them. Sort of. Bioshock 2's core gameplay is solid, if nothing else. It gets a 3 out of 4 for core gameplay, like puzzles and shooting, because, well, with the weapon play and the ability that now you're able to do plasmids and weapons at the same time, you will have a blast, especially combined with how satisfying some of these guns feel and sound, you're always going to have a decent time in groups of enemies. Except Little Sister. And it gets a 3 out of 3 for being fair and easy to understand because for the most part there are no serious surprises and almost always there will be a nice little introduction sequence to get you acquainted with a weapon or plasmid. It finally gets a 2 out of 3 however for interesting modifiers because while yes you can just decide oh I'm going to do plasmids, oh I'm going to do drill only, there's not really any thinking outside of the box when it comes to the gameplay modifiers. This gets it an 8 out of 10 for core gameplay. Player character handling is another place that Bioshock 2 absolutely excels at, was getting full 4 out of 4 for having Subject Delta almost always do what you want or expect him to do. He handles exactly like you think an extremely spliced up monster in a near impenetrable suit would handle, and you really get the feel like you're an original Big Daddy that is nearly indestructible. It gets another 3 out of 3 easily because it's pretty much easy to understand how to navigate, use weapons, play the game, etc. without the need of outside guides or an excessive tutorial. Most of the game's teaching is intuitive, and aside from picking up a gun and being presented with a specific situation, it doesn't need to do too much. Then finally, it only gets a 2 out of 3 for menus being intuitive and easy to navigate, and that's only because I thought it was the stupidest thing that I can't really see how many big sisters are left in the world from the map menu and I have to pause the game to see that sort of thing. It would have just made more sense to keep that in the main menu of the game and not have to go to the pause menu. I hope this is making sense. Another strong suit of Bioshock 2 is the diversity of gameplay. While back in the core gameplay there weren't many modifiers to style of play, there are still multiple ways to accomplish tasks like melee versus range versus hacking everything in sight and letting the robots do work for you so it gets a 5 out of 5 in that area and it gets a 4 out of 5 in all these waves being interesting because while there are interesting ways to do things in regard to say trying the drill boy achievement or whatever it's called it's not like crazy prey levels of interesting and different ways to do things and this earns Bioshock 2 a 9 out of 10 for the diversity of gameplay. As we near the end of this video, Bioshock 2, at least the remastered version anyway, gets a perfect score for optimization. The game boots quickly, levels the road reasonably fast, and given the machine it's on, it does not chug or need any dips and fixes in frame rate. It also easily achieves 60 frames a second, and it is not super resource intensive. I have to admit though, if we were playing the original version of Bioshock 2, this game would likely get at least a serious ding for having games for Windows Live, which to be fair, it does not have any more. But God, I hate a game for Windows Live. I still can't play Grand Theft Auto 4 because of it. Bioshock 2 also gets a perfect score for in-game stability, earning a full six out of six for the game running without freezes, crashes, desyncs, and etc. I don't know what happened between these two remastered games because the first Bioshock remaster is a mess, including several game-breaking sequence bugs as well as a whole lot of crashes, but Bioshock 2 remastered runs perfectly fine. 
It also gets a four out of four for being able to handle its own assets. The game never accidentally overloads on memory because of all the things loading in. There's no excessive pop in, it just runs, earning it that 10 out of 10. For the closing comments on this game, it really feels like it is an impressive feat that this game was made in two years, which even though it's a sequel, that's still quite a bit of crunch considering that you only had a fraction of the original team on it and none of the original leads, save for Gary Scheiman. That's still not enough to give it bonus points though. In fact, I'm very on the fence about giving games bonus points in contrast to docking points if it does something egregious. I also intentionally chose not to even so much as mention the multiplayer segment in the review because this is a remastered version, which in case you didn't know, the multiplayer is entirely stripped out of it. Like I said in the opinion video about Bioshock 2, I really would have liked to have seen what 2K Marin would have been able to do if it got the five and a half years or so that Bioshock Infinite got. But alas, that's not the case. In case you weren't able to follow along with some math in your head, this game gets an 81 out of 100 overall, which uh, really, there's no other game to uh, compare it to right now on this review sheet, so it is the number one game by default. 81 out of 100 is still a pretty solid score though, and I think I'm gonna do the Doug DeMuro thing and just create a Google Sheets document where people can see all the games I've reviewed and how they stack up to each other, eventually having an actual average for all the games compared to just the whole C is average, B is A is what you're supposed to be getting. Thank you so much for joining me on this inaugural video of the Charlatan Score. If you like the video, be sure to uh, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends so that you can say, oh look, here's how Bioshock 2 really did on review scores. And please consider giving me a dollar on Patreon, which is much cheaper than getting a soda out of the vending machine these days, and probably better for your health than chugging down that soda. In the meantime, uh, sign-offs are stupid and I never know what to say. Like, I bet I could even pick him up without getting murdered right now. You think I can pick you up without getting murdered? Ooh, I can pet you. He can't even figure out how to kill me. I got his tummy. I got his tummy. Alright, let's test motor skills. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, there you go. That's my boy. They had the drugs are wearing off. I took this video too late. Yeah, you look like you're just going to sleep it off.